Hey there, welcome back, friends, to the 2020 Rewind. This is episode three, my first blaster out of 20 level 50 characters I'm going to be showing you. I've already shown you two brutes. Now I'm going to dive into a couple blasters. I am revisiting, I'm rewinding time. I'm going back, looking at additional level 50 characters that I have on City of Heroes Homecoming server, the Excelsior Shard. And I'm going to showcase their builds. I'm going to showcase their strategies. I'm going to show you how they play on teams. I'm not just going to sit here and throw down a build and tell you how awesome it is on, you know, on paper. And let me tell you what my pylon times are. No, I'm going to freaking show you what this build can do. No, no holds barred. No, oh, uh, you know, if all the procs click at once, I'm going to do 5,000 damage in one shot. Isn't this a great build? No, you're going to see it. You're going to be able to judge for yourself whether or not this thing holds water or it sinks like the Titanic. Uh, so Hex Girl, she's this succubus goth rock star team chick kind of based on Scooby-Doo kind of idea. Uh, she's got side blast. She's going to get up in your head. It's going to make herself a sandwich with your brains. Then she's got fire, this, you know, hellfire that she can summon both with her secondary and the ancillary epic powers. Uh, she's going to be doing a bunch of damage, as most blasters do. And she's going to be doing it up close and personal melee. So let's take a look at the mids build so you can see what I am talking about. We got Psy Blast. I've skipped a couple things. I didn't take Side Arts, and I didn't take Scramble Mines. That's just a little, you know, pew pew uh, light damage attack. Nothing wrong with it. I just don't need it, given all the other stuff I've got going. Scramble Mines, that is a little faux disorient, it's a little single target. I do like Side Blast overall because most of the powers have some sort of control. Uh, you know, this Dominate Will here is a single target sleep. Mental Blast just does damage, but it does have minus recharge. Uh, TK Blast, that's got a little knockback in it. Side Art, which I didn't take, that's got minus recharge though. Side Focus is your, your aim, you know, build up type of power, so it's got to hit and damage. Uh, Silence is your, you know, super long range snipe attack that has minus recharge. I've got Cyanado, that's got some knock up, big old uh, AOE target. It's not really a target, it's kind of like a cone. You like throw it out there and it pops up and knocks people flying up here. I love that one. Already mentioned Scramble Mines being a stun. And then Psy Whale's your big old PB AOE nuke that also has a bunch of stun and minus recharge. So secondary effects, a lot of minus recharge, but I was leaning more towards the controls because you're gonna see with this build, I'm gonna need as much control as I can get for mitigation because she is gonna be in melee a lot, as I mentioned. Taking a look at it, you can see why. Fire manipulation, I have the ranged single target immobilized ring of fire, but everything else for the most part, aside from the aura buff kind of stuff, is a, a melee attack. I've got Fire Sword. It does have some minus defense, but it's an attack, straight up melee. Combustion, that's a PBAOE melee, DOT on that one. Fire Sword Circle, another PBAOE. I love the sword attack. Build up, there's you know another uh, plus damage, plus to hit power. Uh, Cauterizing or uh, Consume and Burn are three patch-like abilities or aura abilities that are going to do damage, but they're also going to have a little bit of buff. They're going to have a little bit of potential control. Cauterizing Aura, this is your, your AoE um, damage, but it's going to give you recovery, healing over time. Uh, it's really not meant as a damage, more of a survival power, but it, in and of itself, it's not going to keep you alive. Consume. This is some damage, little PB AoE, but it's mostly there for the plus endurance. And then the burn patch is, you know, the one that you've probably heard of that many, you know, brutes and tanks, that sort of thing, who are farming are using burn patch. You walk up, you drop a burn patch, and you sear things around you. It does break you out of immobilize, but, you know, that's sort of like its third reason for taking it. I didn't take hot feet. It's a big old endurance hog. It's a big old aggro magnet, and I don't need that kind of flack. I, I already have enough going on with what I'm going on, what I'm going to be doing here. So as you can see, I'm going to be doing a lot of damage up close. And so I have a lot of these little soft controls with the blasts and some of the slotting choices you'll see I've made that gives me some pseudo, you know, dominator-ish, uh, I don't want to say level, but uh, control. When I build my, my blasters, I actually come at them from a dominator perspective because I never used to play Blasters back in live when, you know, it was just COH. When COV came out, though, City of Villains, I, you know, really sunk my teeth into the Dominator playstyle. 
And I really love that they had those, you know, strong controls coupled with some blasts and some melee attacks. That was awesome for me. Really aggressive play style, really up close and personal, edge of your seat type of thing. So when I build blasters, I kind of build the same idea. I try to get as much control as I can, and then I don't shy away from melee. I don't shy away from getting up close to personal. I'll take the I'll take the range attacks, right? But I'm not building for straight range. I'm building to get up there and lay into some people. So I'm going to be going there. I need as much control as I can get. Uh, and then I went ahead and grabbed the fighting pool because I need tough in order to help me get that survivability up close to personal and get the smash lethal armor uh, protection there, resistance. I took combat jumping for the immobilized protection because nothing's worse than being immobilized as a squishy character. You need to be able to move and get in and get out. Get a little bit of defense, right? You get a little bit of jump, but mostly for me it's demobilized or just holding set bonuses, that kind of thing, set mule. Uh, I was at one point, I think, going to go with uh, flight as a travel power, but many of my characters, I don't really bother with travel powers anymore. I just use the temporary stuff that you can get or the, the prestige powers you can get from the pay to win or whatever they're calling the uh, the vendor these days. So I do have air superiority as yet another, uh, you know, melee attack. It's a great one. If you've not seen it, it has to sort of knock down. You like flip people with it and it any uh, flying people because i am going to be on the ground i am not flying trying to catch them uh you know burn patch doesn't work too well if you're hovering right you got to be down and touch the ground to do it same thing if you know hot feet is really better if you're kind of down low and can move i don't have it but you know those are some of the reasons i wouldn't want to get into flying so anyway i took do have air superiority uh you know kind of a throwaway power a little bit but it's better than boxing right it's better than um i do have kick uh, you know, it's better than just brawl. It's got that minus fly. So if anybody is trying to get away from me, I can whack them like those freak uh, stunner guys and go flying away. Hit one of those, bring them down. And at Fire Mastery, I've got the whole the whole kit and caboodle here. Let me uh, scroll this down a little bit so you can see. I do have the entire Fire Mastery set going here. Bonfire. Everybody loves Bonfire, right? That's that patch of... Uh, bonfire patch that you throw out the right flame it has knockback i think i have the proc turn into knockdown we'll take a look at the sets in a minute char single target hold because again some more controls necessary fire shield there's your smash lethal fire and cold resistance shields that's gonna give you some more survivability uh melt armor is my probably one and only debuff but i really like melt armor if you can get enough recharge to get it to come back quickly enough, you know, because it is on a fairly long recharge at 200 seconds. I've got it down to 118, so that's under two minutes. You know, it's every, what, three spawns, four spawns, we'll throw this out there. But it's a nice, beefy, 40-second long, minus defense, uh, minus resistance power. So it's going to increase your damage output. And the Rise of the Phoenix, of course, because as a blaster, you're going you're gonna to be dirt napping a bit. So I do have this. Uh, as my self-res, uh, and I'm going to use it as an offensive tool as well, right? So if I go in there, and I know I'm going to die, I'm not going to run out. I might as well just go ahead and die right there. Then I can, boom, rise to the phoenix, do a bunch of damage. I think it explodes and knocks people back, if I remember correctly. So then I can re-toggle. I don't have a ton of toggles, so I can get my toggles back up pretty quickly, get back in the fight, and start laying some more damage out there again. Uh, I'm not doing anybody any good running away in the other direction. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big, you know, believer in blasters, stand your ground, guys, stop running away, especially if you do have some buff healing people on your team, let them do your job, they can't be chasing you back towards the elevator, so stick in there and keep with it, I don't care if your health is redlining, again, this is me coming from a dominator perspective, dominator mindset, I'm redlining my health all the time playing my dominators, it's like, go, 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 get them, get them, get them. Because I'm always one more control away from, you know, uh, flipping the flipping the battle in the other direction. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at power sets and numbers and all that fun stuff that you uh, you min-maxers out there like to take a look at. Now, my builds, for the most part, are never looking at a min-max scenario. I usually look for one or two, you know, gimmicky kind of things that I really go after. In this particular build, you'll see I'm going to have a lot of, you know, little controls here and there that I can stack up and do uh, not just damage, but also mitigate incoming damage by keeping things slept, stunned, knocked down, held, whatever I can do. Uh, just keep stacking that on there. Give me that, that chance to 
you know, to finally land that, that killing blow on somebody. All right, so looking at the offensive sets, uh, my blasts. Uh, Metal Blast, I've got the Devastation set in here. Uh, from a from a set bonus perspective, I've got Regeneration and Hit Points. That is one of my other mitigation strategies here. I don't have a lot of damage resistance or defense, so I'm going to rely, probably stupidly so, on Regen and Hit Points. I'm just going to try to keep, keep staying alive as long as I can. So I got a lot of regen, I got a lot of hit point boosting, and then my sh my auras and stuff are also going to help me with that. But I got that, plus you'll see I've got the chance to hold in here, because that's going to give me that little extra, you know, mag, what is it, a mag 2 hold on this thing? Uh, yeah, it's a mag 2 hold from what I can see here, every three, three times procs per minute. So you know what, I've got it here in Metal Blast, I'm also getting damage boost out of it, I'm getting some more fire and cold resistance out of it, some mez protection. So I've got that set here in Mental Blast. I've got it here in Dominate Will, you know, give me a little bit of extra places in order to get some holds because I've also got Char coming up later. So I've got three powers that have a chance to hold in it. You know, Char being a hold, but Dominate Will being a sleep and a hold because sleeps don't hold for long. They get woken up. But if I can sleep hold you, then it gives me a little bit extra second or two of, you know, keeping you from killing me. Plus, I can stack enough on a boss. Once I get down to a boss as my only target, and I'm just cycling Metal Blast, Dominate Will, Char, I can permanently hold that guy. Uh, Ring of Fire, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, TK Blast, I slotted this one for the KB set, Kinetic Crash. Movement Speed, Smash Lethal Resistance, you can kind of see where I was going with that. Plus, Force Sliding gives me KB protection, because I don't think I have... Uh, yeah, I didn't take anything like, um, knockback protection anywhere else that I remember. Yeah, I didn't grab it in overwhelming force either. So, I think this is my only KB protection. It's mag 3, but it's decent enough. It's going to prevent you from getting knocked back by, you know, 90% of things that are going to hit you. So, it's decent there, and I don't mind this being my one ability that's going to send something flying, because usually... The thing I want to send flying is like some boss that's up in my face, and I'll just eject this guy into the back corner of the room and then just start laying into him with blast, blast, blast in order to get the hell the hold back on him. Uh, all right, so that's the idea there with TK Blast Fire Sword. I've got the Crushing Impact set, some Smash Lethal Resistances in there, some Hit Point Boosting like I already mentioned. Got Accuracy, a little bit of Recharge, so I've got that in that set, or have that set in there. Uh, I didn't take it in, because, yeah, see, this is one problem is that fire manipulation doesn't have any other single target, you know, um, melee attacks. So that's your one and only fire sword. I wish I had one more to kind of throw in there. I don't know what I would replace, but uh, I would like to have another one. You had a little bit more crushing impact would be fine. All right. All right, so let's go ahead then. Again, I don't want to talk too much about my control -y stuff. Dominate Will already mentioned that one's got the sleep in it. Fire Sword Circle, I've got the Multi-Strike set here. I've got that also in Combustion up here. I've also got it in Psy Well as well. So I've got it in three, four locations with uh, Burn. You know, what's up with that? It's a fairly cheap set. It's uncommon. You can buy these things off the market for under a million each, no problem. Somewhere between 500, 900,000, you probably grab these if you just want to buy them. You can usually get them as drops as well. You can craft them yourself. But anyway, with uh, five slot in them, I like this set because it's got three different types of resistances. You got Smash Lethal, Fire Cold, which are the big ones I'm going for, and then Energy Negative, of course. And then with the five slot, you get a little bit of defense, right? So I've got that in four different locations. So that's going to give me, you know, 6% Smash Lethal, 6% Fire Cold, uh, what, like 10% or 9%, something like that energy negative plus i'm getting all the mez resistance because it's a blaster you don't have mez protection so i like those those resistance sets give you uh that extra mez resistance bonus in there as well uh let's see what else we got here silence i went ahead and grabbed executioner's contract the set has the disorient bonus proc on it so again another way to stun that i've thrown in here so i've got yet another you know confusion not confusion but another way to Take a target out for just a few seconds with a big old long range stun. That'll team up well with Psy Whale on, let's say, a, a boss, like point blank range. Just freaking Psy Whale plus uh, Psy Lance, the guy. 
Uh, more resistance here, right? Fire Cold, more regeneration in this set, more Smash Lethal in this set. You can kind of see the pattern here, Lather, Rinse, Repeat. Cyanado, I have Superior Frozen Blast in that one. This one has Fire Cold resistance. It's got a little bit of recovery, of course. It does give uh, slow resistance, so that's you know, a little extra perk. But mainly I was going after that Fire Cold in there. I didn't, I don't think I, I might have originally been going because I wanted to get the Immobilize as well, but I don't think I ended up going there because I wanted to get this thing damaged up as best I can. So the numbers on it, you know, kind of speak for themselves on my hit and cap on damage and endurance and my accuracy is like smacking the cap too. I did throw in an uh, extra kind of offset power, um, offset IO here, artillery's endurance, recharge range. And I think I actually have this plus five on the live build so that I can get you know, a little bit extra endurance, of course, the range, the recharge on this thing, because these other sets, you know, just the four of these frozen blasts were like 70, 80%. This is pushing me up to that extra, you know, damage, the endurance, throwing some range in there. I want to be able to chuck that thing as far as I can as well. All right, so that is the deal with Psy NATO. Then moving over here, air support is air superiority. It's through the crushing impact. Smash lethal with the two on that one. Uh, so that kind of helps me a little bit with the fire sword teaming up with that. That's another reason to take air, air superiority as that throwaway power. It's giving me a little bit more smash lethal. Psy whale, I already mentioned this one. It's a big old PB AoE. It's got a disorient. It's got a minus recharge. The minus recharge on this, by the way, is pretty hefty. It's 70% minus recharge. So there is some mitigation there that you can you can milk out of this power. Right, so not only are you going to stun somebody, the stun is mag 3. Uh, the duration is 21 seconds. I've got it slotted up to. I think that's with my incarnates. Uh, but anyway, it's going to stun a bunch of dudes. It's going to do a bunch of damage. And they're going to have their recharge uh, crapped out. What's the duration on that? The recharge for 20 seconds, minus 7% recharge. So you can layer some decent minus recharge with this build. And you've heard me talk about this with a few of my other builds before. I'm all about multiple layers of mitigation. I'm not just all or nothing. It's all defense or nothing, right? I've got resistance. I've got mez I'm throwing out there. I've got some minus recharge. I've got regeneration going. Anything and anywhere that I can find some way to keep alive, I'm going for it, right? Uh, and this makes the builds more fun for me because anybody I think can sit here and build these max defense, cap defense, cap recharge builds. That seems to be all the rage on the builds that are posted on the forums. I'm skinning the cat with a different uh, knife, okay? So that's what I'm shooting for here. Plus it makes it so that I can have more flexibility depending on uh, enemy type. You know, if you're only fighting the same exact enemy, you're doing some farm or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't really matter that you only have one type of defense or whatever. Uh, but if you're playing the game and fighting all kinds of different foes, it's good to have as much variation as far as your, your mitigation, your protection as you can get. Uh, Bonfire went ahead and grabbed the Overwhelming Force uh, proc. This is the one you get from the Summer Blockbuster event. And I've got the Knockdown to or the knockdown to Knockback. Sorry, Knockback to Knockdown proc in here. So that Bonfire turns into just a, a uh, you know flapjack patch. Does a bunch of damage. People are not going to be, you know, being ejected across the room uh so it's just gonna keep them popcorning right there in place and then i of course dive into melee and let loose with my swords my circle certain combustion the auras the consume the burn patch the psi whale boom 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 the scorched earth policy as they're flopping on bonfire burn patch i just mentioned that you drop a burn patch right where your bonfire is, right where your enemies are flopping around. You hit them with Cyanado. You knock them up in the air. You Psy Whale. They're all stunned and bobbleheaded and walking around the place. You're then laying into them with whatever else you've got. Just blast, blast, blast away. Meanwhile, your Cauterizing Aura, which I haven't even mentioned yet, is going to be ticking your, your recovery, your regeneration, healing, etc., etc. Oh. Uh, Anything else? Rise of the Phoenix, I already mentioned that. It's just your res, and I just put the Shirakos. Chance for lethal. Why not? You know, I'm not hopefully going to need to use it that often, but when I do use it, give me a little bit of extra damage in there. Awesome. Great. All right, last thing we'll kind of take a look at are some of the non damagey sort of things that I've got slotted here. So I've got Ring of Fire. This, I think, is plus five, which is just an accuracy immobilized from Enfeebled Operation. 
So it's just going to give me as much, you know, accuracy and, and, and immobilize as I can on a single target. This is good if a boss, you know, you want to just immobilize a boss in place, or maybe there's some some flyer. I forget if my if Ring of Fire has the minus fly on it. Yes, it does. It says it's minus 160%. So you can throw that on somebody who's trying to fly away, right? You want to make sure it hits, make sure they can't get away. Boom, plus five on that one. Uh, then I've got, you know, side boost and build up. These are just slotted with to hit recharges. Uh, I don't have those plus five, but I could. I have them just attuned on my live build, but, you know, I could plus five them. I just didn't at the time. Uh, but that's what I've got those. Then we've got the Cauterizing Aura. This is you know, probably your big uh, defensive strategy here. Aside from you've got resistances from the couple different shields, and you've got this layer of uh, mez that you're throwing out there, especially with some of the knockdown that you've got going on. Uh, Cauterizing Aura. This is going to keep you alive. It is your... It's a PBAOE damaging, firing, ticking uh, aura, but it does some healing over time. It does some recovery over time. And the way I have it slotted, and I'm not 100% sure this is optimal, but the way I have it slotted, I have it slotted to give me back some endurance as well. So what I've got is three of Theft of Essence in there going after Ack, Heal, Healing, and the plus Endurance Chance proc. So, in other words, you need to hit with this thing for it to damage and trigger these these boosts, I believe is how it works. I don't think they... I know the procs only fire in with accuracy checks. So, the 2 plus healing, or the 2 plus endurance procs that I have in here, the Theft of Essence and the Performance Shifter, they only work if you hit a target. So, I have to be in melee for those two endurances to work. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I'm not 100% sure if the regen, the sorry, the heal ticks and the recovery, if those are just auto or not. Uh, I'll have to go in the game and see. I think they're always on. I don't think you need to hit with that. Uh, but I think it accelerates. Let me see what the information says. While active, you're surrounded by flames and continuously burn all foes that attempt to enter. In addition, you recover a small amount of health every few seconds. Damage is minor, blah, blah, blah. So the exact way that works, I don't remember. The healing, I think, just procs normally. But I think when you're in melee and you do damage, it does boost something. <laughs> I know... Whatever. We'll see. Maybe this is a horrible slotting. I don't know. But I, I know it works. I know it gives me endurance back because I do have endurance draining issues given I don't have a ton of pro of uh, toggles, but I got enough that, you know, it's a concern. Let me go ahead and just show that to you real quick so you can see. Turn off my incarnate things. Uh, scoot this up. And let me unlock that. Look at my totals real quick. Let me pop out that window so you can see it better so you know my recovery if all these things are, are firing away is 3.8 endurance strain is 8.1 so i can just unload uh with my negligible endurance i mean it's it's not gonna but when i that's just the way i have it slotted with all these things triggering so you can see my recovery goes from 2.7 up to 3.8 if these things are popping Okay, so that's the thing right here that I want to kind of bring that to your attention. So I've got that there. You know, again, optimal, best scenario. I don't know. I was kind of looking at it a little bit today and was wondering if maybe, maybe the performance shifters would be better in stamina because this way the endurance is firing constantly uh, in a static power like that. But what I currently have in stamina is actually power transfers chance to, to heal. Uh, because the way I've got this slotted, Cauterizing Aura is a better endurance recovery than my Stamina, right? So I'm getting, I think this is like 0.8 endurance per second. This is 0.6 or something like that. Um, so this is actually a better endurance recovery powered Cauterizing Aura. So anyway, because of that, I went ahead and put the heal here in Power Transfer. I didn't put it up here in Cauterizing Aura because... In order for it to be triggered in Cauterizing Aura, I would need to have a hit scored. And Power Transfer doesn't have a lot of accuracy slottable in the sets. You've only got the triple damn 
ac n and then the quad dam ac recharge n so i wouldn't have a ton of accuracy so that's why i went ahead and put the performance shifter set up here because i've got the end ac just the, the the dual set here and then i've got the ac heal from cauterize or from theft of essence so between the two of them my accuracy is okay around 50 percent without my incarnate stuff going uh, so that's why those choices were made, in case you're wondering, like, what the hell are you doing? Uh, but I, I have the plus endurance, two procs, and cauterizing aura, but I have to hit with them. And I'm not worried about that, because in the heat of a battle, I'm going to be in melee. So I'm going to be hitting, I'm going to be getting the endurance back. It's going to happen. And I got a bunch of recovery, and this is going to give me the heal over time. I've also got health is slotted with the preventative medicine absorb proc. Um, and then I've got the healing popping off of uh, energy transfer. Plus, I've got all this other regen and hit point boosting I have with a lot of these different sets. So overall, I feel that my regeneration and that sort of thing is pretty solid uh, overall. So my, you can definitely see if I pop on cauterizing aura again. You know, my, my recovery is 3.8. My regen is 2.02. So I feel that's pretty that's pretty solid, right? I also still have consume, which I haven't mentioned, right? If I click consume, that's going to give me even more endurance, right? It's going to pop me up to 2.20, 4, uh, four an end per second. So I am like four times, almost five times my endurance gain versus my output so i can just keep fire 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 go 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 click 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 attack 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 okay that's kind of she's just gonna go psycho burn 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 sigh 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 go nuts that's kind of her plan that's her strategy and hopefully everything's dead before she dies uh and then once the fight's over i've got regen i've got the self-healing kicking in i got the absorb proc that'll help keep me alive and then get me back going on my feet so I'm not worried about my recovery too much with all the way I have it slotted. And then I've got some resistances going. If you take a look at my Smash Lethal, 67, Fire Cold, I got 60, 61, and Fire Cold's like 50%. So, you know, not the greatest numbers, but solid enough to keep me, you know, not taking one massive alpha strike and being dead. So, boom, I'll take some damage. But then hopefully I can recoup it quickly enough. Uh, get those, get the heal, you know, go and cauterize an aura and the stamina with the, the power transfer. Get those endurance, or, you know, get those heal points back up. The absorb proc kick in to keep me standing. Whatever I need to do, and then regen. Of course, if I hit with some minus regen, I'm screwed. Uh, all right, so what else did I want to show with this, with the build? Let me scoot that back out. Let me scoot that back down a little bit. All right, so other than that, We've got Tough is slotted with Impervium as well as Fire Shield. I got those both five slotted. I got the Psy Resistance in both. Uh, the Psy Resistance is going to give me a little bit, you know, I got 20% Psy Resistance. So that's, yeah, meh, it's all right. All right, better than nothing. So I've got that from some of my slots and just from the Impervium Armor. Got Recovery here. We've got Psy Defense. Maximum Endurance I'm getting there. Plus I'm getting more Fire Cold Resistance out of those two sets. Combat jumping, I went ahead and took, you know, Luck of the Gambler, a little bit more recharge, never hurt anybody. Overall, recharge isn't, like, going to make or break. I think I've got, like, 112%, so it's at 12.5% total. So you almost might argue this Luck of the Gambler is kind of a throwaway. I could maybe find something else to throw in here from a defense set that might be a little more useful. Uh, just trying to think off the top of my head. Maybe you go with more knockback protection. Try that. You can go with the plus accuracy from Kismet uh what else increased run speed and eh. maybe the scaling resist damage that might even be a smarter play instead of luck of the gambler i throw reactive defense scaling resist that might give me better survivability that's not a bad idea uh then i've got the shield wall which is the global plus resistance to teleport and plus five percent resistance to all damage types so that's what that's going to help me with there consume i've got preemptive optimization sitting in there Max endurance, more hit points, resistance to toxic and psi. Okay, I'm gonna round this out. Already talked about fire shield and impervium armor, and then melt armor. I've got a shield breaker in there. I didn't take the damage proc, but I do have it in here because I like that it's got some more recovery, right? But it's got look damage resistance, smash lethal, got some defense in there. So I've got that. 
And then Char, I went ahead with a lockdown set on that one. Let's see, I'm gonna pull this over here so you can see it. Scoop that up a little bit so you can see it. Oops, lockdown, that can show up. No, there we go, lockdown. Damage buff, right? More, uh, what do we got? We got uh, boost to holds. We got resistance is being boosted. Damage resistance, right? I mean, kind of see the theme here. Get the idea of what we're going for. All right. I think that that is going to be covering all the main powers. I think I hit everything that I wanted to say. Sprint. Yeah, I do have a stealth and sprint because I'm going to be trying to run in the melee. So I need to be as hidden as I can. So that's sort of a no-brainer. All right, then the last thing we'll talk about, of course, are the incarnate choices that we've got going on here. So let me scoot this up so you can see everybody. See all that stuff? There it is. Uh, we've got... Move that down. Uh, as far as what I went for on alpha side of things, I grabbed vigor, accuracy, healing, and endurance reduction, right? So this is going to help all my powers hit more. Right, especially like the uh, cauterizing aura, right? I need that to hit. It's giving me more healing, so cauter cauterizing aura will work better. Stamina is going to work better, right? So that's why I've got that. Uh, my, so it'll help my regeneration rates coming up as well. And then endurance reduction, just because again, I don't want to run out of endurance. And a lot of psi powers, and a lot of these fi fire powers have a lot of uh, endurance um, re requirement. Like psi whale, the endurance cost of that is normally 27. Uh, I've got it down to 14.45 right now without uh, Vigor turned on. Cynado, that sucker's at 18.5, and it's normally, let me zoom in on this so you can see it better. So, like, you got Endurance cost was 18.5. I got it down to 9.46, but with Vigor, once I activate that, you know, I'm dropping it down another point or two to 8. And Cy Whale's sitting at 12. Cy Lance is pretty heavy, too. It was 14-something. Now it's down to 9. So your Psy attack's got a lot of endurance cost. Uh, same thing on your fire attacks. You know, 18.5 is fire sword circle. Combustion is 13. So even though I have a ton of recovery, you know, burn patch is not too bad. Five, uh, where was it? Cauterized and is not costing me anything. But these attacks, 10 for your fire sword. So all of your attacks out of the box are double digit, you know, endurance hogs. So if I didn't have this recovery, uh, and even though I have all this recovery, you're going to still see my blue bar is going to move just because it's, these attacks have so much juice required for them. They deal a lot of damage, but they take a lot of oomph. So anyway, that's why I went with Vigor. All right, so now my overall numbers are pretty solid. If I go back and let's take a look at the regen with Vigor. I don't think it should. Yeah, so regen goes from 202 to 220 when I turn on my Vigor. Uh, my Cauterizing Aura... If I take a look at that, what happens when I click? It's going to show up. Info. It's going to show up here. Nope. I don't see it changing. Double check. Oh, wait, there it is. All right. So the healing. Yeah, there it is. Let me, let me zoom in. You guys can see this better. So the healing without vigor is, you know, 28 hit points. Uh, What is that? Per, that's per tick. Uh, so when I have Vigor and I'm at my level 50, I'm now at 36, right? So that's, what's that, like 50% more, something like that. It seems like, well, 30%, I guess, because that's what I think uh, Vigor's adding to the, to the party. So anyway, that's what's up with the Vigor. Uh, then we got, what, Paralytic. I went with minus defense, minus damage. Again, some more types of mitigation here. Uh, so Paralytic, every time you hit with one of your attacks, you're going to lower the defense, which... I'm going to need, right? I need to be able to hit. I've already got Melt Armor with some minus defense. This is going to give me some more minus defense. I think it's minus 2.5% every time it procs. Uh, and then I've got the damage debuff, which is the side I, I'm going for, the radial side. That gives me a little bit more protection. It's going to lower damage by 5%. So that's kind of like another 5% uh, damage resistance I've got here. So incoming damage will get lowered. I just need to hit targets. And because I'll be in melee and I'm having these fiery auras and burn patches around me, this should be proccing. I should be benefiting from the minus damage from anybody in melee range with me. So that'll, that'll help my survivability there. 
Pyronic, of course, right? A big old fiery explosion. I've got the, the disorient side, the radial side, so I got the big old damage. This could be dropped right in melee range, of course. You got the big stun out of this. Between that stun and the Psy Whale stun, like the everything, the entire room is just bobbleheading, you know, wobbling around the room. They're done. I have Clarion, which, you know, is your big uh, break free. Uh, so it's got status protection. It's also going to boost my range and it's going to boost my specials. So don't don't ignore uh, Clarion with the, um, the radial side with the plus special. Because when you click this thing, it's going to enhance a lot of your other stuff like defense. You see my defenses go up a little bit when I do that. Any of my control powers are going to get boosted from this. You know, so my hold, my immobilize, things like that are going to get boosted from the specials, boost defenses. I think it should boost your healing too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that should, let me pull that up on Cauterizing Aura, make sure that that is true. So yeah, my healing, so check this out, Cauterizing Aura, when I have Vigor, let me turn off my Incarnates again. So there's Cauterizing Aura. If I turn on Vigor, the heal goes from 28, 29 up to 36, 39. And then when I have uh, Clarion activated with the plus special, now my heals are going up to 50.85. So I'm pretty much almost doubling my healing with those two Incarnate powers activated and running. And Vigor's on all the time, and Clarion will be on whenever you know I click it. And the duration is like, what, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, something like that. Uh, it has this diminishing, uh, you know, decay on it. So it's not like permanent, but it's going to give me extra healing, extra everything, extra controls, extra defense. Uh, and then I went with melee radial. I like melee radial for, uh, for, for melee. I like melee hybrid for a lot of my melee characters. Uh, so even though you think of blaster, what the hell's a blaster taking melee for? Why not damage, right? Assault. Uh, again, think about what my strategy is. I'm planning on going into melee, and I'm planning on staying there. Sure, more damage is always better, but I feel like I have a decent amount of damage as is, especially like on a team. I got more than enough damage, right? But what I don't have is defenses and that sort of thing. So I went ahead, and I've got the radial side of melee. And so with that, it has plus regen, plus defense and status protection okay for nearby uh for myself i think and other people around me if i'm not mistaken it, it let me just double check that description so let me pull the up you guys can see it so this power grants the user stacking region defense status protection for each enemy within 40 or within 10 feet the effect reaches cap at nine enemies these enemies will be taunted by power so it's even a taunt hey why not uh, equipping this hybrid power grants a passive boost to regen. So I'm getting the passive regen all the time. So that's going to help my numbers as well. If I look at my regen, my regen goes from 220 up to 250 while I have this activated. Okay, And I'm getting more status protection. And I've got Clarion giving me status protection. And I've got all those status you know, resistances and all those set bonuses I've got. So... I'm not going to be getting held that often or for that long, which is, you know, the kiss of death, even though you've got a couple powers you can activate with Defiance or whatever, but that's still not enough. So that's what I've got going on here. It's going to help me out a little bit, depending on how many enemies I'm targeting. And again, I'm going to be targeting a lot of enemies because I'm going to go into melee and I'm going to get their attention. Uh, it's better just surviving long enough and not just getting alpha to death. And my last thing I've got, it took uh, the Phantom radial superior i had this on i think it was nordic star when i ran that brute uh i do have the radial so i have the unaffected pet that has the the heal and i think it's like got like fortitude or something like that so it's pretty much like a little empath if i'm not mistaken or is this one this one i don't know this one's more like the peace bringer heal and essence boost and stuff so anyway look for that he's going to give me a little bit of extra I mean, healing extra support uh, and then you got the boss phantom who's going to deal extra damage and throw that out there because you know who couldn't use more damage I'm trying to think what the the support pet if it does give me any information on it if that popped up in another window or not nope all right so there you go that my friends is the plan for my girl here hex girl she is 
going to get in melee and she's going to scorch earth policy and try to survive long enough for all that regen and crap to kick in and keep her alive. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Maybe she'll get mopped up, but that's the whole point. We'll catch you in part two when I do some solo runs against some council. In the meantime, peace out.